Hello and welcome to Fast and Factual. I'm Utsav Parekh and I'll take you through the top 50 stories of the day. Let's begin. Ukraine says it shot down 10 missiles and over 20 drones launched by Russia in overnight attacks. Moscow targeted the capital Kyiv, the city of Dnipro and eastern regions. However, several drones and missiles were not intercepted and hit targets in the Kharkiv and Dnipropetrovsk regions. Russia has intensified missile and drone attacks on Ukraine this month. It's reportedly attacking logistics and infrastructure facilities before an expected Ukrainian counteroffensive. The U.S. has approved the $285 million sale of a NASAMS air defense system and accompanying equipment to Ukraine. The development comes as Kyiv looks to strengthen its defenses against Russian strikes. The U.S. issued a statement saying that Ukraine urgently needs to improve its ability to fight against missile and aircraft attacks from Russia. The statement added that the sale would not require any additional U.S. government employees or contractors to be assigned to Ukraine. Russia's Wagner mercenary group exchanged prisoners of war with Ukraine on Thursday. Video and drone shots show men in uniform being passed from one side to the other in an un unidentified location. Zelensky's chief of staff later confirmed that they had secured the release of 106 captured soldiers in the prisoner exchange. The now-released Ukrainian soldiers were captured fighting in the devastated eastern city of Bakhmut. German, Dutch, Portuguese and Spanish ships arrived at Poland's, at Poland's port of Gardenia on Friday. They're, they're to join the Polish vessels stationed there as part of NATO's Standing Maritime Group 1. The group serves as a rapid multinational response force and comprises of vessels from NATO member countries. The command of the group rotates among the participating nations, with Germany currently holding the command. China has said that it hopes the Black Sea Grain Deal can be implemented in a balanced, comprehensive and effective manner. The statement comes one day after Russia threatened not to extend the deal beyond July 17. This is if Russia's demands to improve its grain and fertilizer exports are not met. Spanish judicial and medical workers went on strike in the capital city of Madrid on Thursday. They're demanding a pay increase amid rising living costs. 15 to 20,000 people from across the country participated in the strike. Hundreds of people took to the streets of Bolivia to demand action on sex sexual abuse allegations against the country's Catholic Church. On Thursday, angry protesters gathered outside two churches in the capital, La Paz, to demand justice. Protesters wrote the word rapist on church exteriors, while some carried placards that threatened to lynch priests found guilty of abuse. Since April, around 200 people have come forward to say they suffered sexual abuse in religious-run schools in Bolivia. The Patriarch of the Serbian Orthodox Church conducted a service near the Vladislav Ribnikar School on Thursday. It's the spot where a teenage boy killed nine students and a security guard on May 3rd. Thousands came to the procession for the Patriarch's Feast of the Ascension service. Serbia is still in shock over the May 3 school shooting and another which followed a day later. A man killed eight people in a village south of the capital within 48 hours of the school shooting. In the US, Minneapolis res residents gathered at a makeshift memorial to mark the third anniversary of George Floyd's murder on Thursday. Floyd, a black man, died after his neck was pinned to the ground under a police officer's knee during a botched arrest. Derek Chauvin, a white officer, was captured on video kneeling on the handcuffed Floyd's neck for more than nine minutes. Chauvin was found guilty of murder in 2021. 
Meanwhile, a family from the U.S. state of Mississippi is demanding action against another police officer. They want the officer to be dismissed and charged with aggravated assault for shooting an 11-year-old boy dead. The incident occurred when police responded to the child's own domestic disturbance call at his home. The deceased boy had called the police home after his mother was threatened by a man on May 24th. Argentina's Vice President Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner has slammed the International Monetary Fund over the country's repayment of debt. Kirchner said that the IMF deal is holding back the country's economy. She says that the debt is impossible to pay off. Argentina wants faster payouts and easier economic targets. The country is working to rebuild reserves needed to cover trade costs and future debt repayments. A man has been arrested for opening the emergency door of an Asiana Airlines flight as it was landing in South Korea. All 194 passengers survived the flight. It landed safely but with its door still open at the international airport in the city of Daegu on Friday. Local media reported that some passengers fainted while others had breathing problems and were taken to the hospital. The 30-year-old culprit was arrested upon landing. South Korea launched its homegrown Nuri space rocket on Thursday. The successful launch comes after it was cancelled a day earlier due to technical glitches. The third flight of the Nuri rocket marks a major step in South Korea's nascent space program. This as the country seeks to become a key player in an intensifying race with its Asian neighbours. South Korea is expecting three more rocket launches till 2027. Mexico's Popocatepetl volcano erupted, spewing ash and smoke into the sky. The volcano, known as El Popo locally, is one of the most active volcanoes in the country. Authorities warned that its emissions of ash clouds could affect nearby cities. Residents near El Popo have been put on high alert due to the increased volcanic activity. Parts of Spain's eastern regions received rainfall after months of drought. Some villages in the region had not seen rain in the last six months. Spanish authorities say that this year's rainfall was 28% below average. The downpour brought relief to farmers who were losing their crops to the drought. Meanwhile, Tunisia is also suffering from a severe drought. Several regions in the country have not received rainfall in over five years. Farmers are unable to grow crops like wheat, forcing the country to import the grain. To prevent famine, Tunisia will have to import over 95% of its grain this year. In April, Tunisia's water reserves shrank to dangerous levels. The government introduced water rationing across most regions, including the capital city, Tunis. This meant that no water would be supplied to homes from 9 in the night to 4 in the morning. US-based National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is predicting that at least nine hurricanes will hit North America between June and November this year. Meteorologists say that the number could be higher if ocean temperatures continue to rise. They added that the El Nino weather pattern will lead to stronger hurricanes this season. El Nino refers to the warming of the ocean surface. This alters wind patterns, causing wetter conditions over the Atlantic Ocean. Vietnam's Halong Bay, a tourist hotspot, is facing a plastic waste problem. Mounds of plastic bottles, cups and cans are piling up on the shores. Plastic waste can be seen floating across the bay's waters. These are, some, these are the most visible signs of human impact on the UNESCO World Natural Heritage Site. Meanwhile, locals have begun clean-up efforts. Since March, over 3,500 tons of plastic rubbish have been collected from Halong Bay. Activists from the group Just Stop Oil disrupted the UK's Chelsea Flower Show. Three protesters threw powdered paint onto the flowers. The activists say they were protesting against the government's plan to give licenses to over a hundred new gas and oil projects in the UK. Visitors at the flower show tried to stop the activists and called for security. 
Authorities detained the protesters and registered a case of trespassing against them. Dozens of climate activists tried to block the annual shareholder meeting of French oil giant Total Energies in Paris. They chanted the slogan, all we want is to knock down Total. Climate campaigners are growing impatient with European oil companies over their impact on the planet. Police officers issued several warnings to the protesters, asking them to vacate the premises. After the warnings were ignored, police fired tear gas to disperse the demonstrators. Reports suggest that JP Morgan will slash nearly 1,000 roles in First Republic Bank. It'll account for about 15% of the latter's workforce. Employees who will be laid off will receive pay and benefits for 60 days. They'll also receive packages with additional lump sum payments. JP Morgan says it's assisting the employees with finding new roles within or outside the company. This comes after JP Morgan took over First Republic Bank earlier this month. According to reports, global grain trader Viterra is in talks to merge with US-based rival Bunge. With this deal, Viterra will gain access to export terminals in the US. A merger with Bunge would also put Viterra among the top tier of global grains merchants. Reports say that the deal structure is being discussed by both parties. French tyre maker Michelin is selling its Russian operations. The company is selling its two local entities, Russia Tire Manufacturing Company and Camso CIS. The local tire distributor, Power International Tires, is buying both the, both the units. Details on the sales price have not been made public. US-based electric truck maker Nikola is at risk of being delisted from the Nasdaq Stock Exchange. Nikola's share price has reportedly been below $1 for the past 30 days. The company now has until November 20th to comply with the Nasdaq's minimum price rule. The rule requires a company's share price to be above $1 for at least 10 consecutive business days. US-based Ford Motor has signed a deal with Tesla. With the deal, Ford will now gain access to more than 12,000 Tesla superchargers. It will allow Ford customers to use Tesla's chargers for their electric vehicles. Ford customers in North America will be able to avail of the benefits from early 2024. U.S. chip giant NVIDIA's share price surged by 24% on Thursday. Reports say an increasing demand for AI-focused chips have boosted NVIDIA's share prices. The surge more than doubled the stock's value for this year. It also increased the chip designer's market capitalization to nearly $940 billion. OpenAI CEO Sam Altman says that the company has no plans to leave Europe. Altman has reversed course just days after he threatened to leave the region over its new AI laws. Earlier, he had said that European, the European Union's current draft of the AI Act was over-regulating. The European Union is working on the world's first set of rules to govern the AI sector. Tech giant Microsoft's president, Brad Smith, has flagged concerns around artificial intelligence. He says that deep fakes are his biggest concern regarding AI. Deep fakes are realistic projections of false content. In many instances, deep fakes have been used to create realistic images of fake events. Smith wants to ensure that people are informed when a photo is real and when it's generated by AI. The US health regulator has approved Elon Musk's Neuralink to launch its first in-human clinical studies. Neuralink aims to develop chips that can be implanted in people's brains. The company says that this will help in the treatment of neurological disorders. Earlier, the US health regulator had pointed out several concerns related to Neuralink. This included the possibility of the implants negatively impacting the user's brain. A 22-year-old student from Stanford University has designed an AI eyepiece. 
Brian Chiang says that the eyepiece uses AI to provide quote-unquote charisma on demand. The eyepiece can apparently make people better at flirting or job interviews. Chiang vouches that the eyepiece generally amplifies a user's personality. Now let's move on to sports. Indian badminton star PV Sindhu won a thrilling quarterfinal at the Malaysia Masters. The shuttler made a comeback in the third game to beat her Chinese opponent Zhang in a hard-fought match. Sindhu will now face Indonesia's Tunjung in the semi-finals on Saturday. India's highest-ranked badminton player HS Pranoy continued his winning streak at the Malaysia Masters. Pranoy beat Japan's Kenta Nishimoto 25-23, 21-13 to storm into the semi-finals. He will face Indonesia's Christian Adinata in the next round. Spectators at the Malaysia Masters got to witness a record-breaking 211-shot rally in the women's doubles quarterfinals. Malaysian pair Perli Tan and T. Murlitaran played the record rally with their Japanese opponents. The rally went on for more than three minutes. The Malaysian duo won the rally and the match. In football, Manchester United hammered Chelsea 4-1 at Old Trafford in the Premier League. With the win, Man United have secured a spot in the next season's Champions League. The Red Devils scored first in the sixth minute with a goal from Carlos Casemiro. Anthony Martial then extended United's lead before half-time. Miguel Fernandez and Marcus Rashford scored for United in the second half. Sakira Felix scored a consolation for Chelsea in the 89th minute. Manchester City striker Erling Holland has been named Footballer of the Year by the Football Writers Association. He was felicitated with the award at a ceremony in London. The Man City forward was recognised for his exceptional performance this season. Holland has scored 36 times in 35 Premier League appearances this season. Hasna Doumi has become the first female to coach a men's football team in Morocco. She will head the IRF Ben Salah Club, a local team that plays in the country's amateur league. This year, Morocco is celebrating another achievement for women in football. This is because the country's national women's team has qualified for their first ever FIFA World Cup. In tennis, Nicolas Jarry stunned two-time defending champion Kasper Rudd in the quarterfinals of the Geneva Open. After going down in the first set 3-6, Jarry fought back to seal the match. He recovered 7-6, 7-5 in the remaining sets to complete the brilliant turnaround. Jari will now face Alexander Zverev in the semi-finals. In Formula One, Lewis Hamilton dismissed rumours about him joining Ferrari at the end of the season. Instead, Hamilton says he's very close to signing a new contract with Mercedes. His contract with Mercedes was set, his current contract with Mercedes is set to expire at the end of the season. There had been speculation that the 38-year-old could join Ferrari. However, Hamilton backed his Mercedes squad despite having a rough season. In basketball, Boston Celtics beat Miami Heat in Game 5 of the Eastern Conference Finals. Hosts Boston beat Miami 110-97 in front of a packed house. Derek White led the charge for Boston with 24 points. Miami still lead in the seven-game series against Boston 3-2, but the Celtics are taking it to the wire. A Nepali Sherpa has scaled Mount Everest for a record 28th time. Sherpa Kami Rita broke his own record of climbing Everest the most number of times. After the successful summit, the 53-year-old Sherpa reached Nepal's capital Kathmandu. He was given a hero's welcome. While addressing the crowd, Rita said that he had no immediate plans of hanging up his boots. He first climbed Mount Everest in 1994. He summited the peak almost every year since then. The American Foundation for AIDS Research, or AMFAR, held its 29th annual Khan Gala last evening. 
Amphard is dedicated to funding AIDS research since 1985. The show was hosted by rapper Queen Latifah. Actors Kate Beckinsale and Eva Longoria and model Heidi Klum attended the gala. The evening also saw musical performances by Adam Lambert and Holsey. On auction was a painting of actor Neil Leonardo DiCaprio that fetched $1.2 million. K-pop singer Crystal Jung made her Khan Film Festival debut last evening. The singer was present at the premiere of South Korean director Kim Ji-woon's new film, Cobweb. She was present alongside Parasite actor Song Kang-ho. Jung first popped up on the Korean music scene with the girl group FX in 2009. Indian director Anurag Kashyap's film Kennedy has received a seven-minute-long standing ovation at Khan. The film premiered at the festival last evening. Kennedy stars Rahul Bhatt and Sunny Leone in the lead roles. The noir drama follows the story of a cop-turned-contract killer believed to be dead by everyone. The Sundance Film Festival Asia 2023 has set Taiwan as its venue. The festival aims to elevate Taiwan's image and presence in the global independent film industry. The three-day festival will take place between the 18th to the 20th of August. It will host a short film competition open only for Taiwanese productions. The winning film will win a cash prize of $1,650. Country music singer Dolly Parton's rock song, World on Fire, has debuted on Billboard's rock charts. The song climbed to the number one spot on the rock digital song sales. It's the first song that the 77-year-old singer has released from her upcoming album, Rockstar. This is the first time that the singer has ventured into the rock genre. The album will release on the 17th of November. Singer Dua Lipa released her new song, Dance the Night Away, last evening. The song features in the new Barbie movie, which is due for release on the 21st of July. The entire soundtrack of the film will release alongside the movie. Dua Lipa also stars in the movie with actors Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling. Action film franchise Kill Bill is set to get a remastered 4K edition. This will coincide with the first Kill Bill film's 20th anniversary at the end of the year. The two-part franchise is directed by Quentin Tarantino. It stars Uma Thurman in the lead role. Actor Colin Farrell has become the latest to join the Writers Guild of America strike. He picketed with the striking writers outside media giant Paramount's office at New York's Times Square. Farrell has said that writers are everything. He was joined by actors Danny Strong and Michael Kelly, among others. The WGA strike is currently in its fourth week. Meanwhile, Marvel Studios has halted the production on its sci-fi film Thunderbolts amid the WGA strike. This is the second Marvel film to be affected by the writer's strike. Marvel had earlier pushed pause on its other film franchise, Blade. The studio also had to stop filming the TV series, Wonder Man. Streaming platform Prime Video has confirmed a second season of the spy thriller, Citadel. While the first season had multiple directors, season two will be directed solely by Joe Russo. Prime Video also shared that Citadel is its second most watched new original series, ranking behind Rings of Power. Citadel stars Priyanka Chopra Jonas and Richard Madden. That's all for this episode of Fast and Factual. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to First Post.